Attainment of low temperatures by pumping on a liquid. Liquid helium boils at a temperature of 4.2 Kelvin, T0, boiling point, when its vapor pressure is equal to P0, 1 atmosphere, or 760 millimeters of mercury. The latent heat of vaporization per mole of the liquid is equal to L and is approximately independent of temperature, 85 joules per mole. The liquid is contained within a dewer which serves to insulate it thermally from the room temperature surroundings. Since the insulation is not perfect, an amount of heat, uh, Q per second, flows into the liquid and evaporates some of it. This heat influx, Q, is essentially constant, independent of whether the temperature of the liquid is T0 or less. In order to reach low, low temperatures, one can reduce the pressure of the helium vapor over the liquid by pumping it away with a pump at room temperature. By the time it reaches the pump, the helium vapor has warmed up to room temperature. The pump has a maximum pumping speed such that it can remove a constant volume of gas per second, irrespective of the pressure of the gas. This is a characteristic feature of an ordinary rotary mechanical pump. It simply sweeps out a fixed volume of gas per revolution. Calculate the minimum vapor pressure which this pump can maintain over the surface of the liquid if the heat influx is Q. So we have a helium dewer. The, the walls are isolated and uh, the surroundings are at room temperature. Uh, the liquid helium boils at 4.2 Kelvin, so T0 is 4.2 Kelvin. P0 is 1 atmosphere, or 760 millimeter mercury. And what we're doing is uh, we are pumping on the uh, helium vapor uh, in order to reduce its pressure and this is going to, uh, in turn, reduce the temperature of the liquid helium. So we're going to try to calculate this temperature. So let's start with part A. So uh, if we concentrate on the inlet of the pump, at the inlet of the pump, we have the following situation. The helium vapor has reached the inlet of the pump at room temperature and it is at the minimum possible pressure PM that can be maintained by the pump. So pressure times volume is the number of moles of the gas that has reached the pump at room temperature, RTR. So this nu is number of moles. So if I take the derivative of this with respect to time, the pressure that I can maintain is a constant PM uh, the volume is flowing out, dv dt. Uh, the temperature is not changing, rtr, because the number of moles of the gas is changing. So <clears throat> we call this dv dt in the problem uh, the pumping speed, which is uh, this funny v uh, sign here. So uh, therefore we have uh, pm times this uh, funny v. Uh, the dv dt is equal to uh, rtr d nu dt where nu is the number of moles so here i have written ideal gas law at the pump inlet and then i've taken its time derivative to show you that we have a decrease in the volume because we have a decrease uh, uh, in the number of moles at constant uh, minimum pressure PM and at the same time uh, we can write uh, the heat that flows in at the same time when we have a heat Q that flows in to uh, evaporate a new moles of uh, the um, gas so Q is equal to L times new then we have uh, the heat influx is basically defined as d bar q dt. It's the amount of 
heat that I provide per second is this is going to cause L times d nu dt the rate of change of the number of moles of gas so I have here the rate of change of the number of moles of gas d nu dt is equal to uh, my um, heat influx divided by the latent heat of vaporization so I can write Um, basically, I can write the minimum pressure I can obtain, Pm, times the rate of change of volume is equal to RTR, the rate of change of uh, the number of moles, which is uh, this heat influx, Q, divided by L. So the minimum pressure I can obtain is... Um, RTR, the room temperature, the heat influx divided by uh, latent heat of vaporization and the rate of change of uh, volume. Part B. If the liquid is thus maintained in equilibrium with its vapor at this pressure, calculate its approximate temperature. So, maintained liquid maintained at equilibrium with its vapor, what is its uh, temperature? At the pressure Pm, temperature Tm. Okay, so we have uh, the clausius clapeyron equation, uh, dp dt is equal to um, delta s over delta v per mole and this was uh, the q uh, divided by temperature uh, times delta v and uh, in the case of uh, vaporization v2 minus v1 is approximately equal to v2 uh, for the phase change from 1 to 2, uh, where V2 is the vapor volume, so this is uh, much higher. So we approximately wrote this as QT times V2, and then we wrote uh, for uh, P, V2 is equal to um, nu RT. So we wrote for V2 nu RT over uh, P. Uh, then we have um, Q uh, and, and for Q we have uh, the latent heat of vaporization uh, per mole times the number of moles nu divided by T nu RT over P uh, the latent heat of vaporization per mole times number of moles the number of moles cancel and we find that uh, 1 over P dP dt is equal to L over RT square or D ln P dt is equal to L over RT square. So uh, what is happening here is we are going from the initial atmospheric pressure P0 to a final pressure Pm. Uh, while the temperature is changing from 4.2 Kelvin to its new value Tm, L over RT squared dt. So we are moving on the phase equilibrium curve uh, for helium from uh, T0P0 to TMPM on the phase equilibrium curve. And this equilibrium is in between vapor liquid phases. Okay, so when we do this, uh, we obtain uh, this is d ln p, so it becomes ln pm minus ln p0 is equal to uh, my, uh, t to minus 2, so it's 1 over 
minus 2 plus 1, so minus L over R T evaluated between T0 and uh, Tm, so this will be equal to minus L over R, 1 over Tm, minus 1 over T0. So I will obtain uh, ln Pm over P0 is equal to um, minus L over R, so maybe make, make this plus L over R, 1 over T0 minus 1 over Tm. So I operated the minus sign in the parentheses. So I obtain um, R o, uh, for 1 over Tm. I can isolate it. This is going to be uh, 1 over uh, R over uh, L ln PM over uh, P0 uh, minus 1 over T0. This will be equal to minus 1 over TM. So I can obtain for TM here the temperature at equilibrium to be 1 over T0, so I operate the minus sign, minus R over L, natural logarithm. Uh, for PM, I substitute the answer from uh, part A of the problem, which was RTR Q over LB. So it is RTR the heat in flux Q over L, I have a P0 here, divided by uh, the volume change uh, in time, dV dt, and this to the power minus 1. So this will be the new equilibrium temperature I reach, starting from uh, 1 atmosphere 4.2 Kelvin, by pumping on the liquid at a, a maximum pumping speed uh, so that I remove a certain amount of volume per second because it's a rotary pump in every cycle it can only remove a certain volume of the gas and uh, provided that I have a heat influx due to uh, non-ideal insulation uh, thermal insulation, I'm going to obtain a minimum temperature uh, given by this expression. So in part C, we're going to put some numbers to estimate how low a vapor pressure or how low a temperature one can achieve in practice. Suppose that one has available a big pump with a pumping speed uh, 70 liters per second, 1 liter is 10 to 3 centimeter cube. A typical heat flux is such that, influx is such that it evaporates about 50 centimeter cube of liquid helium per hour, the density of the liquid being 0.4145 grams per centimeter cube. Estimate the lowest temperature that can be achieved. Okay, so we know um, the rate of change of volume, this is dV dt. Uh, this is given as 70 liters per second, uh, which is um, 70 times 10 to minus 3 meter cube per second. Uh, so this is 0 0.07 meter cube per second. One meter cube is 1000 liters. So let me remind you. Uh, one meter cube is 1,000 liters. So I prefer to use SI units. The pressure P0 is 1.01 10 to 5 pascals, that is one atmosphere in SI units. The heat influx is uh,
to be calculated from the following um, given. I have a 50 centimeter cube of liquid helium per hour is evaporating. So in order to do this calculation, I'm going to use uh, dv dt is a 50 centimeter cube uh, per hour and the density is 0 0.145 grams per centimeter cube so therefore I have um, rho times dv dt which is uh, 0 0.145 times uh, 50 so this will give me um, one point For 5 times 5, uh, which is um, 1.45 times 5, 7.25 um, grams per hour. So this is going to be um, 7.25 divided by 3600, uh, which is... So we have uh, for the heat influx, uh, we, we are calculating the uh, rate of change of uh, volume of the vapor, which is 50 centimeter cube per hour. If I multiply it by the density, rho dv dt gives me the number of grams I'm losing per hour. Since I have 4 grams of helium per mole, that gives me 1.8125 moles per hour or 0.0005 moles per second. Uh, that we are losing. So this is our uh, the new dt. So Q, uh, heat influx, is the latent heat of vaporization times d new dt, that's the uh, rate of change of moles. So 85 times 0 0.0005 gives us 0 0.0428 joules per second. That is our heat influx. So if we substitute here for Tm, 1 over T0, T0 is 4.2 Kelvin. So here I'm substituting T0 equals to 4.2 Kelvin. Uh, I'm substituting for R the universal gas constant 8.31516 joules per mole. Uh, latent heat per mole is 85 uh, joules per mole. And a natural logarithm uh, for R over L we have this. For natural logarithm R TR room temperature I take to be 300 uh, Kelvin divided by L times P0 P0 is one atmosphere which is 1.015 10 to 5 Pascals and for the heat influx that I have calculated I substitute 0 0.0428 and for the uh, volume flow dv dt uh, at the pump we have 70 liters per second, 0 0.07 meter cube per second. By substituting these numbers, I calculate the minimum temperature to be 0 0.923 Kelvin.